Amen. 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 Amen this night. We are grateful. We are thankful this evening. Yes. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, my brothers and my sisters. Uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, do what we're doing. Amen. Amen. I thank God for it. So I know God's doing something great tonight. I uh, I'm blessed tonight to be here. Uh, I have my boys helping me tonight, uh, and I'm just I'm just grateful. Um, let's pray first. Father God, tonight we thank you for your Spirit. We thank you for who you are, God. We ask right now you would cover uh, all that's being said and done tonight. Uh, we ask that you would give everyone the opportunity to get to know who you are, and um, we ask that those uh, that are going through right now. Um, that they stay hopeful and prayerfully knowing that they will be taken care of by you. God, we thank you for those who uh, had the opportunity, Lord, to make it through their jobs and daily walks today. Lord, we uh, understand you're going to be a part of what's going to be going on with this uh, shut-in that will start on Thursday evening. We pray that those who will be within their own households will love one another and take this quality time that you're giving them, Lord, to uh, embellish to their children and to their family members just how important you are in such a critical time. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. I am Pastor Stanley Murray of Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church. And the Lord laid this on my heart. And, and uh, uh, you know, I was thankful and a little warmer here. My boys are going to turn the air conditioning on so we can make sure that all is well with that. Um, but it's a great opportunity to uh, just host a little Bible study. Normally our Bible studies are tonight at seven. So the Lord laid in my heart, why don't you try something at five o'clock, go live, and uh, they can always go back and review it. And so I went and looked at a few of the old special books of mine to see what we would talk about tonight. And I want to look at the book of Exodus, the book of Exodus. And if you have your Bibles, I would ask you to get them. Uh, if you don't, then um, uh, if you have your phones or tablets or whatever you use, we're just going to look for a little bit at the book of Exodus, the book of Exodus. Amen. Amen. I'll give you a chance. Chapter four, and we're going to look at verses 29 through 31. The book of Exodus, chapter four. Amen. We're going to look at verses 29 through 31. Amen. The book of Exodus. And so it reads, he says, and Amen. I gotta get my glasses on. But in this great book, we're talking about God's uh, ability to get us to the next level. He said, Moses and Aaron brought together all the elders of the Israelites, and Aaron told them everything the Lord had said to Moses. And he also performed the signs before the people and they believed. And when they had heard the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshiped. And so tonight, my brothers and sisters, I want to talk about uh, proper posture, how to keep a proper posture in Christ. And I know that sounds a little, a little cynical, but it, you know, the, the way we react to how we do things with God, it shows to other people. There's a big thing called body language, how we uh, give our bodies, how we stand with our bodies, how we speak with our bodies, how we can tell the difference between we're, we're positive about something. You can tell when we're not sure about something just by our body language and our body postures. And so tonight I found a way through this scripture to look at that. And so when we look at the, the book of Exodus, and for those who love to learn, we know that it's the second book in the 66 books in the Bible. And it's also the second book of the 39 Old Testament books. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, it carries about 40 chapters, about 1,219 verses, and about 32,685 King James Version of words that are in that Bible and in that particular book. And this is a very, very important book because Moses is really enlightening us 
of how things were prior, uh, not just prior to his arrival, but also when he became, uh, was born into it. Because in the last chapter of uh, Genesis, you will see that Joseph uh, had begun to uh, done what he'd done with his brothers. He'd gotten himself set up with Pharaoh. He, he had made a way for the Israelites to now be, someone would call, considered uh, a part of what was going on in Egypt. But the Bible also says that along the way, as new Pharaoh came, after new Pharaoh came, after new Pharaoh came, one came that knew not Joseph. And so you have to ask yourself, what kind of posture were the people of God displaying that would have allowed, that would have allowed this Pharaoh to not know who Joseph was? Uh, and we have to ask ourselves today, what kind of posture are we displaying that people can no longer uh, remember who Jesus really is? And how important Jesus is to our lives. Are we walking away? Are we talking away? Are we believing in a way? Are we speaking in a way that people are forgetting that Jesus is the Lord and Savior of our lives? And so we have to take that under consideration. So as you begin to look at this text, you know, you, the first uh, chapter in Exodus, he begins to open our eyes. And Moses is, is, is learning that uh, he, he, he's going to play a major part in what's going to be going on in this great um uh, place of time. And I don't know about you, but I don't ever want you to water down who you are in God. I want you to make sure that you realize that if you are breathing and can hear the sound of my voice right now, that there is still a purpose God wants to use you in if, if you desire to be used. And I know that Moses at the time was born into this, maybe not even a decision made. His sister, uh, she sought and put him into this basket by the, by the realm of his mother. It was sent down the Nile River right up to the back door of Pharaoh himself, he was brought in and grew up with Pharaoh, with, which will was eventually be the new the new Pharaoh. They grew up together as brothers, and along the way, that value, but they could always probably tell there was something different about Moses. And so you have to ask yourself, even when you're in the realm at your job, even when you're at your schools, young people, even when you're you know in your own home, do you fit in? Uh, do you do you carry a character that some people say just something about you, something's different? about you, the way you display yourself, the way you talk, the way your posture presents itself, they can just tell that you're different from the other people that you are around. Think about that for a second. And that was very important, I think, in how Moses was able to even transition himself into what God would have him to do. Though he may have wore the same wardrobe that Pharaoh wore, maybe he may have been able to riding in the same chariots, eating at the same dinner tables, it was still something about him that he was able to connect with people outside of his realm. And that's the thing about being a good Christian and a strong Christian. Your body posture will allow you to be everything to everybody. Hmm? I think that's very important. I think you should not limit yourself to one particular culture, one particular creed, one particular uh, environment. You should be able to display this beautiful thing about God is to you that no matter who you're around, somebody should be able to say, I can see God within this person. That's very important. So keeping a good posture. So we look at this great book in the fourth chapter. You know, Moses is now understanding that God wants to use him and use him mightily and put him to a place that he's going to now help his people. And I want to encourage you tonight, don't just be at a place, be in a place. You know, don't just be someone who goes to a building, sits there, hears a few songs, hears a sermon, goes out back into the household, back into the world, and still stays the same. You ought to be growing and changing daily because of your desire to learn who God is to you. So Moses is looking here. He first he says, he said, Moses and Aaron brought together all the elders of the Israelites, all of them, not some of them, not most of them, but all of them were brought together. And so if I begin to put this together, when you're talking about postures, usually when someone calls you in somewhere to a big meeting, to a big powwow, to a big conference, everyone's usually what? Seated. That was a very big thing about how the Hebrews, when they came together, they all would sit around together and they would partake in food and they would partake in drink and they would partake in conversation. But they all made sure they were all sought around to honor one another. And you have to ask yourself, that's a seated, that's a selected posture. You have to want to be seated at the table in order to be heard by God. You have to want to be seen and seated at the table for people to know that your desires to please God are matching God's decision and realm. And so you're sitting there, you're selected. And I don't know about you, but don't ever think that you have not been selected by God. If he woke you up this morning, you have been selected.
for God to use you in a very, very, very special way. And sometimes in that, in that selection, it can get a little hard. I, I, I'll be honest. I'll just talk about me. It can get a little complicated. The expectations that come with being a Christian and the walk, it can be very, very tiresome. It can be very, very challenging. It can come situationally where you feel like you're in a struggle. And if you're not careful, it can become a stronghold to you of wanting to please God. And don't let that hold you. Don't let that hinder you like that. You should want to have a spirit of wanting to be connected to God no matter what is going on around you. And so don't let your selection uh, cause you to not to want to be selected. And I, so he's looking at this. And think about this. Moses was selected by God. He was put into this little, this little crib and brought down the river. He was selected. And even when, when Pharaoh's daughter found him and brought him up and, and displayed him to Pharaoh's mom, and, uh, to, to, to her mother and to her father, they took him in. They didn't have to. I'm sure they could tell by physical attributes this was probably not an Egyptian child. I'm sure they could probably tell that this was a Hebrew child by whatever area that they saw it in. So for them to accept this child into their home, knowing he was not like them, already showed the favor God had set up for them because he was selected to be where he was supposed to be. Y'all not hearing me today. But think about that for a second. You have been selected to walk into areas of your life where you may not look or display the attributes of what God is having the other people display. That's right. You're going to stand out. You're going to show a sign of selection. You're going to show that you're someone. You know, we got the NFL draft coming up in a little bit. 285 people are going to be selected to be a pro football player. 285 out of thousands that play football. Think about that. And I think that's an awesome opportunity to be selected. And I want to encourage you today by letting you know that there is a great, great place God wants to select you in to use you towards his people. So keeping that posture, a selective posture, you're, you're straight in your shoulders, a smile on your face, a firm handshake, those are very important. Those are signs of confidence. What do you do when you're with God and he's putting you in the place of people? Are you holding your head down? Are you ashamed to speak? Can you not speak with authority? Can you not speak in knowing who God is to you? Don't let the enemy cause you to change your posture about being selected by God. It's a great thing. It's a powerful thing to be selected by God. And so many times I think we water it down because we're caught up in the, in the, the simple semantics of life and the things that go on with us about who we're supposed to be and where we're supposed to go. I'm encouraged by knowing that God has a great thing for us. Amen? So let's look here. He says, Moses and Aaron were brought together with all the elders of the Israelites. God is going to bring you before the people who have been oppressed. All the Israelites at that time, they were oppressed people. They were going through in their mind. They didn't know if there was a way out. Remember, they had, because of the posture they were going through with the, with the Egyptians, they were no longer displaying a positive attitude. They were not displaying a strong unity of who their people were. And the Bible says, the more that Pharaoh threw the babies into the Nile River, the more they still multiplied. They were growing in number, but not in name. Wow. And you have to ask yourself, and I was telling some young people Sunday, no matter what is going on with your jersey number, never let them forget your name. Don't let your number outplay your name. Why? Because when you are moving to a next level, Numbers change all the time. People change your jersey number. They give it to somebody else. Every blue moon, they take a certain number and they put it up in a banner in a stadium and say this person's number will ever be worn again. But you got to think about that. That's a rarity. So most of us, most of us are going to have to remember, if they don't remember my number, they sure better remember my name. Does God remember your name? I believe he does. Will people remember your name if you're in the right posture? They'll remember you. Think about that. So here they are. They're gathered with all the elders. Now, so that means that there was even people in position during this time of oppression. And here we are right now talking about the things that are going on in the world right now, the things that are, that are oppressing the people in their minds about this virus and everything. Where are the elders? Are we gathering? Are we coming together with a posture of, of saying we know that God is going to get us through this? 
because this was the prelude. If you think about this, this coming together was a prelude to 10 plagues that came shortly after. Where were the elders? Where are we, guys? Ladies, where are we? Are we putting ourselves in a position that would allow people to know that it is God that is using us in the greatest manner possible? It is up to us to make sure that we are in proper place for God to utilize us for the proper way. Think about that. Where's your selected posture? They were seated at the table. And I want to encourage somebody by saying, he says he would even prepare us a place at the table in the presence of our own enemies. So that lets us know that even when we're sitting with our own enemies, even when we're sitting with our own people, God is going to put us in place. God is doing some fabulous things for us. We have to make sure that we're sitting there prepared to do what God has us to do. Let us not be discouraged. Let us not find ourselves wound up or caught up. Think what he says here. Moses and Aaron brought together all the elders. All of that is coming into play, guys. Are you ready for your time at the table? Are you believing you're going to be able to speak with a sound mind and a sound word at that table? Do you believe God is going to justify by glorifying? So much goes up against us. But I truly believe that you all are properly set right now. While you're in your homes, start reading your word. Start getting into prayer. Start encouraging your family. Start putting things together. Start setting those dialogues between them so that they can now speak truly who God is to them. I know that he is who he says that he is. I believe it. And I'm going to be setting myself in place as well. He says here in verse 30, he says, and Aaron told them everything the Lord had told Moses. My brothers and sisters, are you speaking everything God says? In this critical time, I know that sometimes we feel limited on what to say. And we don't want to hurt anybody. or We don't want to sound too holy. Or we don't want to sound not holy enough. But whatever God tells you to say, you tell it all. Because at this critical time, think about this. Moses and Aaron were meeting with the elders. They needed to hear nothing else but the truth. And everything but the truth. You got to be able to do that. Tell them what God is saying. Don't, don't worry about how they're going to accept it. Don't worry about whether it's going to please them or not. Don't worry about it's going to get them all riled up and get them to saying hallelujah and amen. Don't do that. Don't worry about it. You just tell them the truth. Because the posture of you sitting up straight saying, here's what God is saying, my brothers and my sisters, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift is still eternal life. To be not weary and well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Feel free to say that. Because he's saying here, and Aaron told them. And now listen, Aaron is speaking for Moses because Moses has a speeching impediment. He has a stuttering issue. And so they wanted to make sure that they heard every clear word and not misconstrue what Aaron was trying to, what, what Moses was trying to say. So he used Aaron to speak on his behalf. And I believe God uses us to speak on his behalf. Not that he can't get the word out, because he is revelation. But I truly believe he uses us as confirmation. And so you have to ask yourself, can I speak without stuttering? My life got to match my lips. A stuttering just means that there is a distraction in your speech that could cause people to not hear you clearly. Do you have a stutter? Are you saying one thing, but people are seeing something else? Are you saying one thing and your Facebook posts are saying something different? Are you trying to do this, but your life's saying that? And don't get me wrong, brothers and sisters, we all got stuff. That's not the issue. Let me repeat. We all have stuff. That's not the issue. The issue is, are we putting those things to the side for God to deal with it so we don't stumble people in front? And Aaron began to tell them everything that the Lord had said to Moses. He's talking about everything he told him up on the mountain. All the things he shared with him. The great I am. Moses says, who shall I tell them? Sent me. You're going to tell them I sent you. You believe God sent you today? Do you believe God set it up for you to be able to come and 
get yourself involved in a little Bible study tonight, that you're going to want to go back and read this again, and God's going to give you more. He's going to give you more because you're excited about reading his word. He says, study to show thy own self-approved. You're not studying for my approval. You're not studying for your, for your mom's approval. You're studying that God can approve what you're doing in your life. And it will begin to convict you when you know you're not on track with God. You know, the more you begin to learn about God, the more you begin to get accountable to God, the more you're responsible about your life with God, and the more you will become reliable with your tactics with God. And the more people will see it, and the more they want to know more. And so he said, he told them everything God had said to Moses. He said he also performed the signs before the people. So now we're talking about proper posture in God. We talked about a selected posture. Now we're talking about a serving posture. When you go to a restaurant, do you want a waiter that doesn't want to wait on you? Do you want a server that doesn't want to serve? No. You want a waiter, you want a server or a waiter who's coming in excited about their job. They're coming in with a smile. They got pen and paper. Most of them don't really need to write that stuff down. They pretty much memorize the menu. But you know what it looks like when they write it down? It looks like they're paying attention to what you want. Think about that for a second. Are you writing down the things on your heart or what you believe God wants you to do? Are you taking mental notes, spiritual notes, trying to make sure you're understanding what God wants because you want to be a good server unto him? You want to be a good waiter unto him? Look at what he says. He says he also performed the signs before the people. Those signs that God had showed them how to do. The signs of effectiveness. Those signs that begin to open up their eyes and say, wow, this got to be God. This, 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 this man could not do this by himself. It must be God. And you have to ask yourself, when you speak, do they hear God? When you walk into the room, do they see God? Do they see the signs and wonders? of God working on you? We all got to grow up sooner or later, brothers and sisters. God knows if I knew what I knew now, where would I be? However, I'm still grateful where I am now. I don't have no regrets. I just thank God for the remembrance of what I've learned. And so there Moses is. There Aaron is. They're in a serving posture. They went from being seated to now standing. Can you picture sitting there ordering your food and your waiter or your server sitting down while you're sitting there? You ever hear the phrase sitting down on the job? That means you're not paying attention. That means you don't give value to what's going on. Your standing says that I am in belief of what's being said. Everybody loves it when someone is giving a good worship and a good praise, and they can't help but stand up on their feet and give God some praise. That shows a change, a shift, an elevation, if you will. Sometimes sitting down, that's good. Sometimes I just got to stand up and give God praise. That means that I'm moving from not just being selected to I'm actually moving into a spirit of service. Do you have a spirit of service? Do you have a service spirit? Great times are happening for us right now. I know that there's a lot going on around us in the world, and we're kind of concerned. And I'm not saying we shouldn't have a concern. Just don't let it take control. I repeat, it's okay to have concern. Just don't let it take control. And so I'm seeing here a serving posture, a selected posture, a posture of being seated to a posture of now standing up. God needs you to stand up on some things, brothers and sisters. There's something God said you can no longer sit on. There's some things you can no longer sit down on that you're going to have to stand up, move out, and take over. God is putting some things in place for us right now in our very lives. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Look, we got here a little further. I'm almost done. Then he says in verse 31, 
and they believed. He, he also performed the signs before the people. First, he gathered them all together. Then he gave them the spirit of service, and they believed. Brothers and sisters, it is powerful. I tell my, 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 my clergy all the time that preaching is only a moment to change a mentality. That's all it is. We all get a certain moment in time that when we're speaking, somebody changes their mind about how they're living. Do you have that kind of spirit? That when you talk, a person who's been thinking a certain way, all of a sudden begins to want to think a different way? It's a beautiful thing. When you can convince somebody that what I'm doing is a parent and I need to make a change. I want to encourage you tonight. Make your change. Don't longer sit on what's going on with you. Stand up. Take responsibility for it. Understand that it's happened. However, don't let it wear you down. Don't beat yourself up about it. Don't make it seem like that you can't move further in God. You can't get stronger in God. You can't get better in God. Don't do that. Understand that it's happened. Acknowledge that it has a presence, but don't give it any power. So then in the final verse, he says in verse 31, look what he says here. He says, and they believed. And when they heard that the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshiped. So now we're talking about proper posture in God. From a selected posture to a serving posture to a submissive posture. Can I be transparent? Brothers and sisters, the only way up is down. The only way up is down. If we don't go back to bowing on our knees and giving God the honor that he truly, truly deserves, we're going to keep standing up, taking licks we ain't got to take. If we don't quit sitting down on the things he wants us to get done, we're going to miss what's truly at his table. Blessings and the opportunity to help someone. Once you believe, you can't help but want to bow down and worship. So you have to ask yourself, if I say I'm a believer, why am I not on my knees for God? If, 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 if I say that I'm a believer, why am I sitting down on my purpose? If, if I'm saying that I'm a true believer of God, why am I limiting myself in learning his word? It means something when you want to bow down before God. And maybe just maybe that's the problem. We've learned some songs and some scriptures, and we've forgotten how to go back to the basics of saying, God, I have issues. I have problems. I have some things I need to get straight, and I need to get right, and I need you to do it. Brothers and sisters, before I close tonight, I want to give you an opportunity. I want to give you that opportunity for you to realize who God is to you, why you believe he's important, and where you want to place him in your life. So I want you to do me a favor. If you stretch your hands out in a sign of submission and say, Lord, Father God, I come tonight to recognize that maybe my posture has not been right about how I sit with you, serve for you, submit unto you, and I want to change it. I don't want to be arrogant, Lord. I want to be confident in who you are to me. I want to be convicted so that I can stay converted. Father God, tonight I believe that you died for my sins. Rose on the third day with all power and coming back again soon. So I'm asking if you will receive me so that I may accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Maybe you're saying tonight, Father God, I don't have a place of accountability. I know it's going to be hard. It won't be any physical church this weekend. But I want you to find a church to tie into. Listen to what they're being teaching. 
Listen to what they're doing with preaching. See how they operate. But do something. Don't just sit on a job and don't just be standing around. Go back to being submissive and ask God to heal you. Father God, we thank you for all that's been said and done tonight. We thank you for having a healthy posture about who you are. We thank you for teaching us how to sit up straight, stand up straight, and still be able to submit ourselves unto you. I thank you for all that you're going to do. And I ask that you bless everyone under the sound of my voice today. God, we know that you're in charge. We know that you have all things set up. I want to encourage all of our leaders tonight. Let not your heart be troubled. I hope we can find a way to not sit and cut each other at the knees about who did what or who had church or who didn't have church or who's talking and who's not talking or who's saying this or who's not saying that. Brethren, we got a lot of work to do. We got more than enough people to do it with. Take this time. Love your people. Love your family. Love yourself. Most of all, love God. Thank you for tonight. God bless.